Hello everyone and welcome back to part 1 of this brand new series. In this series I'm going to be showing you how to make your very first Roblox game. And I wanted to go for something simple so I chose a mini game type of game. And I ended up going for a The Floor is Lava game. So you learn how to make a round system and how to deal with the UI and a ton of stuff. And as you can see the, the uh, lava will start to rise in a bit and it will kill other players. That's what we're going to be doing in the first tutorial. Also, if you guys want to support me and want to have access to all of my project files, including the one you're watching right now, they will all be available on my Patreon in the $10 tier. Okay, so here we are in studio, and the first thing that you need to do is to make sure that you have the, these two tabs over here uh, visible. So I'm going to close them. Now, we're going to need two tabs, the Explorer tab and the Properties tab. Now, the Explorer you can uh, view by pressing View and uh, explorer then you can just uh, click on properties then we're going to need the output tab so just go to view and check output now we don't want to see this output all the time you can do that but i don't really like having my my output visible all the time so i'm just going to close it but whenever you want to play this your game just make sure to view the output to see if you have any errors Okay, so one thing that I forgot to tell you guys to do is to publish your game so that you don't lose all of your progress if Studio crashes or something like that happens. So to do that, just go to File and uh, Publish to Roblox As, and then you just... Uh, actually, sorry, you just need to go to Publish to Roblox, uh, Save to Roblox, and just give it a name. So uh, this is going to be the floor is lava game tutorial and make sure that team create is checked so that you don't lose your progressive studio crashes and then just click save and then it will reload the entire place just wait for it and yeah that's pretty much all you need to do okay so now we will start off by deleting uh, actually, we don't need to delete anything for now. We're just going to create a block. Now, the way I did that is by pressing home and part. And just click block. And I'm just going to change the uh, size of this part from the properties tab. So, select your part from the explorer. And, or you can just select it from here from the viewport. Uh, and you can just set the size. So, scroll down. And you're going to see size. Now I'm going to set this to something like uh, 60 or 50 by 1. So 50 on the x-axis, 1 on the y-axis, and 50 on the z-axis. And it's going to make it a square with a height of 1. Now what I'm going to do is uh, get rid of this pawn location for now. And I'm going to set the position of this part. So just scroll down to where it says position. And just set the position uh to zero comma zero comma zero uh, i mean uh, origin so just set the position of the it's in the transform just go to transform and set the position to zero comma zero comma zero now it's perfectly centered and what i'm going to do now is just uh delete the base plate and i'm going to change the color of my part so select my the part and we will go to the brick color tab and i'm going to click on it and i'm going to choose a color that i like now i like having dark green for the grass so i'm going to use it and then what i want to do is uh you can mess around with the material but i don't really want to do that i'm just going to keep it at, at plastic to keep it simple now we need a spawn location where players will be able to spawn so i'm going to go to model the model tab and press spawn location now i want players to be able to spawn here 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 and here uh this is kind of random so you can just position them wherever you want i just want them to be able to spawn there and i'm going to select all these spawn locations by holding down control and select selecting them from uh here or you can go down here to the to the explorer tab and you can click on your first spawn location and hold down control and click on the other ones now what i'm going to do after selecting all of them is setting their transparency so just found the transparency property and change it to one now to get rid of this uh image on the spawn locations 
we can just select just open all these pawn locations to view their children from this little arrow here and just select all of the decals by holding down control and we'll just delete them and now one thing that i forgot to do is to just set the can collide property to false because i don't want the player to be able to collide with them so that it doesn't look like he's floating on the air when he is stepping on the spawn locations now if you play the game uh this part will just fall so just select it or you can just select everything by going here and selecting using control or you can just uh click the first part and hold down shift and click on your last part and it will select everything and we're just going to make sure that everything is anchored so just go down here to the uh anchored property and just make sure that it's checked that it's a blue check mark and now if you play the game you should be able to spawn there so as you can see we spawned in one of these spawns and yeah everything works fine for now so the next thing we need to do so this is going to be our lobby so i'm going to organize this by adding a folder to the workspace by going to the plus tab and typing in folder now i'm going to call this lobby make sure to type it the exact same way that i did so uppercase l lobby so now just select everything by holding down shift again and just drag it inside of the lobby folder now we can close this lobby folder and we can add another folder that we're gonna call map one and what i'm gonna do is go here move to here and i'm just going to add a part now this part is going to be the ground for our uh, uh, map so the size is going to be uh one or maybe it's just 70 by uh one by 70 and i'm going to change the color to a nice green i'm going to make it a little different so that i can see the difference and then i'm going to make sure that it's anchored so just scroll down to anchored make sure that that is checked uh can collide should be checked because we do want the player to uh, can collide to collide with the ground and then i'm just going to position it so i want the y to be zero and the z to also be zero or maybe just the x to be zero no we want the z to be zero okay so that looks good i'm just going to move it away from this and now we can work on our map so uh, i'm going to call this ground and uh, by the way the way i did that is by selecting the part and clicking on it and typing in ground or you can select it and go to the properties tab and just change the name to ground okay so the next thing we need to do now is to uh add a folder that is going to be called spawns so i'm going to just call this folder spawns and i'm going to add a part this time and this is where the players are going to be able to spawn. Now I'm going to make it non-collidable. So can collide should be unchecked and it should be anchored. Now we need to change the transparency, but not right now because we don't need to do that yet. Let's just put a couple of spawns. And the way I'm duplicating them is by pressing Control D. So Control D, move, Control D, move, and Control D and move. We can do that a couple of times to have multiple spawns in the area. Okay, so now that we have enough spawns, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all of them. And I'm going to make sure that the transparency is 1 so that we are not able to see them. Okay, so now the next thing I want to do is build a little place that the players can climb on. So I'm just going to put in some parts so just a little obstacle course and now that i think about it i'm really sorry about that i'm going to remake all these pawns visible because we don't want the player to spawn inside a part so we're just going to keep one i'm really sorry about that we're just going to keep one and we're going to move it somewhere until we finish making the map then we can uh duplicate these pawns so this is going to be the first block that you're going to be able to cl to climb up to and I'm just going to put in a second block over here. Let's just make it close enough so that the player can actually jump on it. And maybe we can have another one over here. And 
maybe another one over here. Maybe we should drag them down to be able to climb on them. And now we can just duplicate these and just move them somewhere. By the way, I can rotate these by holding Control R. I mean, by pressing Control R. And let's make it so that we are able to climb to there. And I'm just going to play here by going to home and clicking this little arrow over here and pressing play here. And it's just going to spawn me there. Now I want to see if I am actually able to climb on these. And yep, and no. Let, let's try that again. Yes, so I am able to climb on them, but it's pretty hard. Not really, but yeah. Okay, so that works. I'm just going to give them different colors. Uh, or not, that's not very needed. Now let's just select everything and put it inside of the map folder. Map one folder. Now we can bring back our spawn. So transparency of one, and we can just duplicate these spawns. Just don't make them spawn inside a part. And yeah, that should be enough. So now we need to duplicate our ground. And this is this since this is going to be a, the floor is lava game, what we're going to do is just duplicate the ground by pressing Control D, clean lava this time. And we're going to make the size bigger than the size of the actual part. So we're going to change this to 100 by 100. And we're just going to move it down. And can collide should be unchecked. And... Uh, Material should be neon, and I'm just going to uh, change the color to a nice lava color. I think that was good enough. And we're just going to make the lava rise up by scripting it. Okay, so now we're just going to make sure that the transparency of this is one, or we can just do that from a script. Okay, now we're going to go to the server storage, add a folder, and we will call it maps. Now we will drag our map one inside of the maps folder. Okay, now in replicated storage, we're going to have a string value. Now this string value is going to be called status. Uh, now what we need to do is to have a folder in replicated storage, and we will call it remotes. Now I'll show you what we're going to do with this later. But for now, let's just add a script to server script service, and then let's just call it... Uh, main game loop okay now what i'm gonna do in here uh is uh, make the main game loop of course so what i'm gonna do is get some services so players equals game can get service players and replicator store so we're gonna create a reference to players so all the players that are in the game uh not really all of the players that are in the game is say i don't know how to explain it it's, it's this uh, it's where all the players are stored, and you, you can uh, mess around with multiple stuff in there. So we can you, you'll see what this is used for when we actually use it. So then we we need replicated storage, uh, and this is for this. So we can create a reference to remotes and status. So replicated storage equals game point get service replicated storage, and now what we need to do is create a reference to server storage so server storage equals game from the service server storage now make sure you type everything the exact same way that i am typing it and uh okay so what we're doing here is just creating references to uh different stuff that we have in here where we have our stuff stored and uh, the way we're doing that is by creating a variable by typing in local and giving a name to that variable and an equal sign to set it to whatever we want. So that's how it works. Now we need the remote folder that we have in here. So to do that, we'll do replicated storage local. So I mean, local remotes equals replicated storage dot remotes. Uh, so since remotes is inside of replicated storage, we're just doing replicated storage dot remotes. If we had another thing inside of uh, 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 this remote folder, let's say a remote event, to create a reference to that, it would be replicated stories dot remotes dot remote event. So uh, that's how it works. Okay, so uh, after that, we will need a reference to the status. So status equals replicated stories dot status. 
then we will create a while loop so while true do okay so what this does is whatever we have written inside of this will just keep on happening so if we have for example print yes then task dot wait five and print no uh what's going to happen is it's going to print yes wait five seconds print no and again it's going to print yes wait five seconds and print no it's going to keep on doing that forever because while true is true then we're just going to do that and true is pretty much just always true so what we need to do now is uh so while true do uh we're gonna repeat tasks dot wait 0 0.5 and drop a line until players dot num players uh, is greater or equal to two okay so now what this does is it's going to repeat every 0 0.5 seconds until um uh, players dot num players so the number of players is greater or equal than two so it's going to wait for enough players then then so it's going to get stuck in this code until uh, there are enough players and it's going to uh, do whatever you write in here okay so while we are doing this we need to set the uh, status dot value to and it's going to be waiting for players okay so after that what we need to do is uh, status dot value equals starting game starting game and what we need to do is wait for let's just wait for like three seconds maybe two seconds and we're gonna type in a for loop so for i equals now just type in what i'm typing and i'll explain what it does so we're gonna start from 10 seconds go down to zero in each time we're gonna go down by minus one. Now this might look confusing, but here's what this does. So, i is a variable in here, and uh, we're, we're starting from 10, uh, and going down to zero, and each time we're going down by minus one. So we're just subtracting, subtracting um, one from 10 each time this runs. And once this once it reaches zero, it's just going to stop. So and i will pretty much be equal to whatever number we are in. So at first it's going to be ten. After that it's going to be nine because we removed one. After that it's going to be eight. After that seven, and that's just how it works. Okay, so what we're gonna do is status dot value equals starting in dot dot and or starting in space dot dot i now what this is going to do is set the value to starting in and this dot dot will just connect this number over here to this string and after that we need to wait one second and uh, this whole entire thing is going to take 10 seconds and what we're gonna do now is just print uh game started now I'm going to play the game and show you what this does. So I'm going to play and select the status in replicated storage. And as you can see now it says waiting for players because there aren't enough players. Uh, but if I just go ahead and change this to one, as you can see, it should say starting game. Starting game in eight, seven, and it's going to go down all the way down to zero and it's just going to print in the output game started and it's going to do that to do that all over again because we are in the while loop so it's going to do that all over again and then it's going to print game started for the second time and uh, it should print it right now okay so it did so we know that this works and we don't have any errors so far so what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to get rid of this print game started and what I'm going to do is loop through every single player in the game. So for so basically the same thing as this but we are looping through the players that are in the game. So for i, v in players, colon get players do and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a table over here. So local table, local participants let's call it participants equals an empty table now a table is 
a uh, think of it as a box where you can store stuff so in here we can store uh, for example uh, the uh, an apple you can store a number you can store uh, pretty much anything you can store true uh, you can pretty much store anything in here and you can have access to it anytime you want in a script so we're gonna create an empty table and the way you insert something into a table is by doing table insert you type in the table that you want to insert anything to it's going to be participants because we named our table participants comma and we will insert v which is the player now before we actually do this we want to make sure that the player is eligible to be able to uh enter the game so his character should be loaded and his health should not be less than zero or equal to zero so what we need to do is local character plus v dot character or v dot character added colon wait so now this is it's just looping through every single player that is in the game now i is going to be the uh, index of that player so at first i is going to be one then two then three and it's going to go down until it loops through every single player in the game and v is going to be the value so the player himself so v think of, so v is going to be the player in this example okay so now we need to check if the character is there so if character is then now if the character is there then we need to make sure that that the character has a humanoid the humanoid root part loaded now the humanoid root part is a is a part that is inside the player and I can select it inside of uh, this player right here. And I can just visualize it. It's a part in here. I can change the transparency to zero in order for you to see it. Now, if you move this, the whole entire player is going to move with it if you do it uh, correctly and not like this. Okay, so uh, now we need to make sure that, that human root part is there and that the health of the player is greater than zero. So to check if the health is greater than zero each player has a humanoid in him and this humanoid uh has multiple properties and one of them is health and it's uh, by default set to 100. so what we're gonna do is local humanoid root part equals character colon find first child humanoid root part now local uh humanoid equals character colon find first child humanoid now we're going to check if humanoid root part is not equal to nil so if the humanoid root part is not equal to nothing so if it's actually there what we can just do if humanoid root part and humanoid what i'm just going to do is not equal to nil to make it more obvious and humanoid is not equal to nil and humanoid dot health okay so and humanoid is not equal to nil then and then we can just check if humanoid dot health is greater than zero then okay so after doing all of this then we can insert the player into the participants table now after that i'm going to wait one second and i'm going to print the participants table and i'm just going to put a wait 100 seconds and i'm also going to lower this to three seconds so that i don't have to wait as much so when the game starts it should print uh, a table with players proc which is me so a table and as you can see one is the number of the player and we have players prog uh, the player himself okay so now what we need to do is load a map so before we actually do all of this before we do anything we need to load the map itself so local map we need to create a uh, variable for a reference for the maps folder so local maps equals and server storage dot maps okay so we're going to choose a random map so to do that we will do local random map now we only have uh one map so the only map is going to be even if we do it randomly, it's just going to be map one, which we have. So local random map equals, and we're going to do maps, colon get children, and this is just going to turn it into a table, just like this one. Now to access stuff in a table, we can do 
so let's say you have something in here. So let's say you have a, a Yes, so let's say, or maybe an apple in here. So let's say you want to access this apple, you can do participants, and you can type in the uh, number of this apple. In this case, it's one, because it's the first item in this table. So participants one, or you can just do print participants, square brackets one, and it's just going to print apple. If I play the game, it's going to print apple. And that's how you can access something that's in a table. You can type either type it in or you can just type in its uh, index now uh, the way we're gonna do this is we will get all the children in the maps which is going to turn this into a table and then we're gonna do the square brackets and instead of typing in one which is just going to get this we will uh, choose a random number from one and the maximum number will be how many maps we have so math.random random from one to hashtag maps colon get children. So to explain this, what we're doing in here, so this is going to return a random number from one to however many maps we have. So if we have three maps, we're going to return a number from random from one to three, but this time it's just going to be from one to one. And then we have our random map. So then we can clone it and then random map so this is just going to create a clone of that map and random map dot parent. We're going to parent it to the workspace right here. And if you play the game now, you should see that we have a map that's going to load right there. Somewhere in here. As you can see, the map just loaded. So we chose the random map and uh, it loaded. Now, if you have multiple maps in here, it should choose a random map. Okay, so after doing that, what we're going to do is uh, in here, we're going to teleport that player when we insert him to this table. Or maybe we can do that before. So, humanoid, we're going to choose a random spawn the exact same way we chose a random map. So, what I'm going to do is uh, local random spawn equals random map. So, since we have this random map right here, it has a, a folder named spawns. So dot spawns colon get children. So a table that returns everything that is inside of that spawns folder. And it's going to be uh, math dot random from one to hashtag copy all of this. And that way we just chose a random spawn. Now we will change the C frame of the humanoid root part, so humanoid root part. What is this? Okay, humanoid root part dot C frame, and C frame is pretty much just position and orientation. So the C frame will be random spawn dot C frame. Then we can do that. Now, if I play the game, it should teleport me to a random spawn. And as you can see, I just got teleported to a random spawn. Now, what we can do in here to make this a little more interesting is to change the status. So, status dot value equals choosing map dot 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 pass dot wait two seconds. And then after choosing the map, what we can do is status dot value equals chosen map dot dot and random map. So, dot dot is just used to... Um, as I said in here, it's just going to, so it's called uh, concat concatenation, I always forget that name. So it's called con <laughs> concatenation, and what it does is just, uh, it uh, connects both of the two terms. So, random map, then task.wait3, two seconds again, and then just uh, status dot value equals teleporting players and after teleporting the players we will wait two seconds and status dot value will be equal to something else but for now I'm just going to set the value to nothing okay now we need to actually display the status on the screen so what I'm gonna do because in the player can't really 
go to replicate his in your Roblox developer can't really go to replicate his storage and select status and see what is happening. Uh, so what we're gonna do is display using a using a text label. So we're gonna add a screen GY to start a GY right here. I'm just going to close this, and I'm going to rename it to main GY, and I'm going to add a text label. Now this is going to be called status. And I'm going to set its size to one on the x scale, comma zero on the offset, comma uh, zero point one on the y scale, and zero on the offset. Uh, then we can change the background transparency to one, then the font of this to Perdoka one, and then the text color to white. And then we can just check text scaled. Okay, now what we can do is uh, 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 rescale this to make it a little smaller. And I'm going to add a stroke. So it's called a UI stroke to make this a little more interesting. It's just going to make it look better. I'm just going to change the thickness to a nice number. And now I'm going to change the text. I don't know what I'm typing text to just nothing. Okay, now I'm going to add a local script to this and I'm going to call it update status. Now in here, I'm going to get run service. You'll see what it does. Again, call it service run service and run service dot heartbeat can connect function. And what we're going to do is select this main GY and uncheck uh, and check ignore GY inset and uncheck reset on spawn. And uh, in here, we're going to do local status and local replicated storage. Now, replicated storage is going to be game plan get service replicated storage. And status is going to be replicated storage from white for child status. Now, script.parent, so the parent of the script, which is the status text label, dot text is just going to be equal to status dot value. And now if I play the game, it should say starting game, starting in three, two, one, zero, and choosing map, chosen map. Oh, we did. Okay, so chosen map. When is it going to say? It does not say that. So we have an error. Uh, random map. Okay. So as you can see, it says that you can't con concatenate a uh, string with an instance because in here we're basically saying combine this with the random map. And we can't do that. The random map is an object. We need to change this to dot name, which is a string. So let's try that again. And starting in three, two, one, zero, choosing map, uh, chosen map, map one, teleporting players, and then should say nothing. Good. Uh, but it will redo everything again. So we don't want that to happen. Okay, so. In here, for now, we're just going to put a task dot wait 100, or one, just 100, and we will have another script, and it's going to be called leader stats. Okay, so in here, we need to get local players, players equals game, come on, get service players. And what I'm gonna do is players dot players app dot player added, come on, connect function player. Now this is going to run every time a new player just joined the game, and when I, I'm going to show you how to create leader stats. Uh, so local local uh, leader stats equals instance dot new folder. So instance dot new is just creating a new instance, which is and in this case we want to create a folder, and we want to it's we we just uh, rename the developer or the the variable to leader stats. So leader stats dot name equals leader stats. Make sure you type it the exact same way I did or else this is not gonna work. Make sure that it's a lowercase l and leader stats dot parent equals the player. So we just created a folder, set its name to leader stats and parented it to the player. Now we're gonna create an int value. So local wins equals instance dot new uh, int value. So we're gonna create an int value and, and then we're gonna do wins dot name equals wins and wins.value equals zero 
and wins dot parent equals leader stats this time, not the player. Okay, so now what we're doing is creating the folder and we are parenting it to the player and then we are creating an int value, so an integer value and we are setting its name to wins, value to zero and we are parenting it to the leader stats folder and what this is going to do is it will give us some stats in here. So as you can see, players plug wins and it's set to zero. Okay, so now what we need to do is to just uh, enter our main game loop script and what we're going to do is do the exact same thing that, by the way, I'm going to put this back to 10 and we're just going to copy this. We're going to do the exact same thing that we did in here, but this time we're going to start from 15 seconds all the way down to zero and in here we're going to say the floor uh, the, or the lava will start to rise in and dot dot i and let's see what that's going to uh, and after that I'm going to set the status dot value to uh, the lava or or uh, the lava is rising Okay, so let's try that out. Uh, oh, actually, before I do that, I just want to make sure to add a task dot weight 100. Okay, so starting game 10, 9, 8. I'm not, not going to keep on saying that. Let's just wait for it to count down. Uh, okay, so one second, zero seconds, and choosing map. And chosen map, map 1. Get teleporting players and the lava will start to rise in 13. Let's just wait 15 seconds. 9, 7, 1. Lava is rising. Okay, so as you can see, the lava is not really rising though. Uh, but we're we're going to do that. Actually, you know what? Let's do that right now. Let's not leave it until the next tutorial. Let's do that right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is show you how remote events work. So, so create a remote event in here and in the remotes folder, and we're going to call it uh, Rise Lava. Rise Lava. And what we're going to do in here is remotes dot rise lava con fire all clients, and we're just going to send random map dot lava so i'm going to add a local script to starter player scripts and i'm going to call it remote listener remote listener and i'm going to create a reference to replicated storage okay i'm calling it service replicated storage and local remotes now in the client when i say local script make sure to always type in uh using wait for make sure to always use wait for child so local remotes equals replicated storage going wait for child remote so it's going to wait for that folder to load and before that we need to also get tween service we'll see what that does okay so now we will just uh, do remotes, call on wait for child, rise lava, dot on client event, call on connect function, lava part. And uh, okay, so what we did in here is fire, and let me just bring that script there. So we would just fire that remote to every single player in the game, and the client is going to receive it. And it's going, whenever it, it receives it, we are sending the lava part. Because if you go here, uh, we're doing random map.lava, which is the lava part that we created. And uh, if you go here, we're receiving that lava part. And what we can, what we can do is tween it. Now, tweening is um, changing. It's, it's a thing that Roblox has. It's a service that you can use to... Uh, animate to change properties of a certain instance in a smooth way so what i'm gonna do is tween service colon create 
and uh, so you, it takes the instance in this case it's the lava part and tween info so tween info dot new just type in uh, 15 and then uh, another comma by the way make sure to put a comma after each thing and uh, then it takes what you want to change so in this case we want to change the size equals uh, we, we want to set it to the uh, lava part dot size plus vector three dot new zero comma zero comma zero and in here we will just change this to uh, 100 so it's going to go 100 studs up or maybe just yeah, let's just put it to 100 or maybe you can double check so let's just drag the map back into the workspace and we can see how much we need to rise the lava with let's just uh what 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 did i just do let's just select the lava and make it rise up and let's see how much that is so the size it's 39.5 so we can just put 40. So let's just drag this back into the maps folder and in here we can just change this to 40. okay so we set the size uh, so twin service column create uh lava dot of part dot size plus vector three dot new 40. okay so we have an error though and the error is because we had a comma in here we shouldn't have it in the last part and just type in common play now, what I'm going to do is play the game and see how this is going to look. So I'm pretty certain it should work, but who knows? Let's just see what happens. Uh, I'm going to just stop recording and wait for the lava to start rising. Okay, so right now we have uh, uh, seven seconds left. Let's just climb up. And let's see if the lava will start to rise. So as you can see, the lava is now uh, going up. But as you can see, we need to change that to a bigger number because I don't think it's going to reach me. So I'm just going to change this to uh, something like... Uh, 80 and let's just uh, mess around with the settings so I want this to be 3 and as, by the way I just changed the how long it takes for the game to start and this to okay let's just leave that the same let's try that again starting game starting in 3 2 1 I'm going to pause okay so we have 12 seconds left let's just climb up this and uh, let's see how this looks. So it should look pretty nice because it should tween smoothly. And as you can see, it keeps on rising up and uh, it will reach me at the end. And as you can see, it did better. As you can see, it's not killing me, but that is uh, going to need to be scripted. So to do that, you just need to go to. Uh, your uh, let's just do that in here so what i'm gonna do is random i'm just gonna do random map dot lava dot touched on connect function and what i'm going to do is just type in hit now if hit whatever hit stop part dot parent uh call and find first child let's just do local humanoid equals hit dot parent can find first child humanoid now we're gonna check if humanoid is there then what we're gonna do so whenever we touch this we check if whatever touched it has a humanoid in it if so then it is it is a player so humanoid dot health equals zero now let's see if that is going to work with the tween Okay, so the lava is starting to rise, and let's see if it's going to kill me. And, uh, as you can see, it did kill me, and it will take me to the, um, uh, lobby. Okay, so, 
this is going to be it for today's tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to be covering how to uh, check the last player that is standing, uh, how to stop the game, uh, how to give the player wins, and how to save the player's wins, and maybe much more. Okay, uh, if you guys found this helpful, make sure to subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!